Good everyone. Welcome to Talking Hawks today. Uh, wrapped to have a special guest, uh, Sam Banks, who has nominated for the uh, 2021 draft. So uh, without further ado, uh, actually, if you've got some good questions, drop them in the comments. I'll keep an eye out. But we're uh, uh, yeah, stoked just to have Sam with us and uh, to go through a few things ahead of the uh, upcoming draft. So uh, Sam, welcome. Hey, Matt. Thanks How for having me, mate. Good, thank you. Going well. Oh, it's a pleasure. Good to hear. Good to hear. And he's representing here. Who have you got on the top there, mate? Uh, yeah, my local cricket team, actually, the Levendar Bush Rangers. Um, yeah. Yeah, so played with them for a few years now. Love it. So any other sports did you play uh, sort of growing up? Uh, pretty much just cricket and footy for me. Um, and then, yeah, play a little bit of golf every now and then, but a bit of a hack at golf. So I'm just, just stuck with those two. That's all right. That's all right. So how, how were you at cricket? Um, I played with Tassie in the state teams until we were under 15s. Um, yeah. And then that's when I made the decision to um, go down the footy path. So, um, yeah, ever since then, I've yeah, stuck to footy. But, yeah, I, I still play local cricket now um, in the off-season with Levendale. So um, that's just a really it's a low-tier sort of comp, um, just with, like, a lot of family sort of friends and that sort of thing. So uh, it's something I really enjoy. Love it. Good community. Yeah. Um... Tasmanian uh, heartland there. Love it. Levendale Bush Rangers. I did hear that you scored a lazy 238 not out in a 50-over game uh, just as a 15-year-old, if you don't mind. So uh, is that about right? Uh, yeah, I did one day. Uh, yeah, I, was, <laughs> yeah, I guess it was just one of those days where everything was coming out of the middle and um, yeah, lucky enough to go all right. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Uh, well done. So a uh, gifted sportsman, clearly, which is great. Um, yeah, so Kenya is just to sort of um, go back. Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in, in the Midlands of Tasmania, so um, a little suburb called Whiteford, um, which has only got about 40 people. Um, so I, I travelled sort of to and from town to play footy um, for, for years, um, an hour trip to and from, so a uh, fair bit of commitment there. Um, but in the last year, I've moved down um, to Brighton, which is about 25 minutes out of Hobart, um, which, yeah, a lot closer and easier for school and footy and um, my dad's job and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Beautiful. And what age did you start playing footy? Uh, I started when I was five, I think. Um, I played three years of under eights. Um, yeah, dad always used to tell me about that. So, um, yeah, I started when I was pretty young. Yeah, love it. Uh, for those that uh, may not have seen too much of uh, Sam, in the 19 and 20 seasons, uh, Banks was rated very high, Sam, here, um, as one of Tasmania's top prospects. So in the under-16s, um, so it started way back when, but you, your two national carnivals, um, you've averaged 24 disposals, uh, 20 kicks at 72% efficiency, eight marks, seven score involvements. So... Um, across three matches. That's, uh, yeah, pretty solid, mate. Um, how did you feel that carnival went? Yeah, that was um, that was probably the moment when I thought I might actually have a decent crack at getting taken. Um, just I had a, lucky enough to play Devils as a double underage of that year um, in the lead-up. So I sort of had a fair bit of exposure to, I guess, the older boys. Um, and then, yeah, during the year, I got to go back to my own age group um, and play in the 16s champs, which was um, really good. Um, and yeah, I played yeah probably the best footy um, of my life to that point um, in that carnival. So that no, was great fun. Right. Uh, well, the, when there's a stage set, you may as well use it. So well done. Um, were you a, a player that you naturally found you were, you were talented, or did you have to work really hard to get where you were? Um, I think a bit of both. Like I think I had a bit of talent growing up um, when I was younger and stuff, but. You know, you don't go anywhere, get anywhere with just talent. You got to work hard. So, um, yeah, a lot of commitment. Like, yeah, like as I said, driving to and from a lot of times during the week with mum and dad, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, always doing doing what I can to get better. Yeah, no, big shout out to the parents that uh, do a lot of kilometres and uh, put in a lot of uh, time and effort, which is great. Um, there's a bit of support from from uh, some of your fellow Taswegians, mate. They've uh, uh, they've come out on our some of our socials. So, uh, Jason here. Another great uh, young Tassie boy. A good luck, young fella, he says. So uh, that's beautiful. Um, mate, so talking Hawks, we love Hawthorne, but uh, obviously you um, put your hand up for the draft. So potentially a, a number of clubs here. Who did you support 
growing up. I actually did support the Hawks, Matt. Um, yeah, ever since ever since a young age, I've been going for the Hawks. So, uh, yeah, always a dream to get like, taken in the AFL. But yeah, if you, if you end up going to Hawthorne, it'll be even better. Um, you know, yeah. so um, yeah, I had a when the Hawks started playing down here, I had a membership with them um, for about eight or ten years uh, when I was younger. So. Well, I yeah. used to go up to Lonnie and watch the games at UTAS with the family. Um, yeah, as I got a bit older, though, I started having footy of my own on a Saturday, so I couldn't get up there and watch. Um, yeah. But, yeah, mad, mad hawk sport when I was younger. Yeah, and again, the uh, the the love of uh, devoted parents. So your old man goes for the Saints, you, you told me before the show, and you sort of influenced the family, and you were a family member for uh, with the Hawks for eight years, I think it was. Is that right? Yep, yep, yeah. Dad's a Saints man. Um, yeah, I, when he told him told me he was he was about fifty five and he said one premiership, I thought I'd better steer away from. Him. Um, went for the Hawks, and I'm lucky <laughs> enough to see four. So, um, yeah. well done, well done, good move. So, um, can you, do, how do you feel he'll go if uh, if it's not the Hawks or it's not the Saints where uh, your name gets called out? Will he? Will he I, change he, loyalties? Yeah, I reckon he probably would. Um, he'd, he'd go elsewhere. Uh, yeah. Wherever I went, I reckon um, Dad would quickly jump on board there um, if I was lucky yeah. enough to go. So, um, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, we're getting a bit of uh, support from the the Hawthorne fans here, just saying, mate, hey, uh, get him on board. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Mark McKenzie, if you're listening, here we go. Here's Sam. Um, so... Uh, uh, the AFL players, who have you looked up to and, and sort of uh, either idolised or, or sort of modelled your game, parts of your game on? Uh, when I was younger, more sort of I idolised Sam Mitchell. Um, I think it was probably just because of the name when I was younger, Sam and Sam. Um, yeah. And But then as I got a bit older, I realised how good a player he was, both sides of his body, um, how composed and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, as I got a bit older and sort of worked out where I'm playing, um, like Brody Smith from Adelaide, um, is one that I've looked at and Jaden Short in the last couple of years as well. Um, by sort of rebounding halfback flankers, um, sort of longer penetrating kicks, I guess, and um, yeah, set it up from behind the footy. So that's probably two that I've had a look at over the last few years. Yep, beautiful. Um, and then yourself, what positions uh, do you play sort of in, in recent times and what do you prefer to play? Yeah, ever since um, actually my under 15s carnival got thrown back to halfback. Um, sort of out of the blue. I'd always played in the midfield um, yep. and played some of the best footy I ever have. So ever since then, I've, my main position has been half-back. Um, but I've also been thrown out on the wing when I was double underage with the Devils um, and a little bit through the 16s carnival as well. So they're probably the two that I've played the most footy on in the last um, few years. But I've had little spurts in the midfield as well. Uh, when I'm back with Clarence every now and then, I go in there um, and then when I play in school footy down here, I'd always play in the midfield as well. So um, they're probably the three. Yeah, love it. Well, look, there's been a few uh, good blokes off halfback, uh, Sam Mitchell being one at uh, a point in his career. So are you from Joshua here? Are you a left or a right footer? Or have you gone, ah, I'm a, Sam? <laughs> I'm a right Sorry. footer, um, yeah. actually. But yeah, try and I guess I could still kick fairly well on my left, I guess. Um, it's something I worked on from a young age. Like it's a pretty good trait to have if you can kick on both sides of your body. So it's something that I've definitely worked at. 100%. So when you're playing on the wing, um, were you given good liberties? Are you the sort of player that's uh, got an eye on the sticks when you're you know, coming in towards the 50 and you, you'll let loose? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll have a crack if I, if I think I'm within range um, yeah. and there's nothing better on. Um, but yeah, I think as when I played wing, the sort of role at the time, I was sort of going back more than what I was forward. Um, yeah. But yeah, if I if I did have a chance to kick a snag, I'd I'd have a crack. <laughs> Love it. Got to have the confidence this away. Um, so, what would you say your biggest asset or, or strength of your game is? Uh, probably just yeah, my, my kicking skills. Um, I, I think ever since young age, it's probably been my biggest weapon, um, and it's yeah something that I try to use as much as I can. As you said before, I think with the despisers, most of them are kicks. Um, so I try to kick the ball as much as I can and. Um, yeah, use that to the best of my ability. Yeah, yeah. Um, is this one of your mates here, Harrison? He's uh, been persistent here. Who's the best coach you've had? Yeah, well, Harrison Reed. Um, he's actually the son of one of the coaches I've had um, during the juniors, Jared Reed. Um, I, he coached me under sixteen 
Um, and then he's been assistant coach at Clarence um, in the seniors the last few years where I played as well. So um, that's where Gaz, his nickname's Gaz, and that's where he'd be going at. Yeah, no, nah, love it. Oh, look, and, sorry, I'll, I'll stay local for a second. There you go, Craig. Craig, we'll oh. say you best captain. No, you don't have to answer that, mate. You can uh, have a crack <laughs> on the scenes. Um, <laughs> do you have any uh, game day superstitions? And you lads that know uh, Sam here, maybe you can tell us what you've seen, but uh, I'll let you answer. Sam? Um, I don't really have any game day ones. Um, I think, well, well, the night before the game, I always have a Gatorade. Um, that's one that I've stuck to for a while. I um, don't know why. I think I just must have played well one day and sort of just kept going with it. Um, but other than that, no, I've got nothing actually on game day. All good. Um, and would you attribute uh, any of your sporting abilities to your mum or your dad? And you don't have uh, to get both, in trouble. Here. Yeah, both were pretty sporty. Um, Mum played netball. Um, she was sort of played most locally and played in a few like sort of carnal, um, carnals and bits and pieces. Um, but dad played, ended up playing about 550 games when he played footy. Um, he didn't stop playing until he was 47. So uh, oh. yeah, dad's, dad's a mad footy man. Um, yeah, yeah, he played Tassie um, amateurs when he was a bit younger and bits and pieces like that. So that, I reckon that's probably where uh, the footy side of things comes from. 550. Geez, is he related to uh, Sean Burgoyne at all? Like, the, those two. <laughs> yeah, no, he's um, done, played a fair few, but he had a knee replacement about six weeks ago, so he's paying for it now. All right. Well, amazing. If you've got that sort of longevity uh, in your in your genes, that's a good thing for you, mate. Yeah, um, uh, who would you say has been the biggest influence on your footy? Uh, dad, for sure. Um, yeah, ever since I've had a footy in my hands. Um, since I can remember. So he taught me all the basics of the game when I was um, younger and uh, he's always been the biggest influence. And then as I sort of got older as well, uh, Matthew Armstrong, one of the coaches down in Tassie, um, sort of did a few development schools with him when I was a bit younger. Um, and then he's been assistant coach or a talent manager um, down here ever since I've, oh, ever since I've been a bit older. Uh, he's actually a devil's coach for half the year this year as well. So yeah, matty has been the other one. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, that's great. Uh, what would you say is your favourite thing to do outside of footy? Um, I'm more, I'm pretty, I guess my, most of my life's revolved around sport. Um, very sporty person. Um, and probably the other thing I love doing is playing cricket in the off season. Um, I, I was, I went pretty well at it when I was younger until I sort of steered the other direction and went footy away. Uh, something I've always loved and, and getting back, just playing local cricket. Um, it takes sort of a bit of a getaway from footy, I guess, in the off season. Um, something that I really enjoy. I've got a lot of really close mates up there and sort of really family driven club um, and everything like that. So that's something that I really enjoy. Yeah, love it. Good stuff. So, uh, all right, down to uh, game day. You're 25 metres out on the boundary. Do you pass or do you have a shot? Um, if there's someone there, I'll pass. If not, I'll have a, I'll have a shot. Um, yeah. yeah. Go the best option first. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, game day now in, in a different sense. Uh, what's your favourite, uh, given you were a Hawks fan, I'll have to do this for the Talking Hawks uh, following. Uh, favourite Hawthorne memory and favourite Hawthorne memory in Tasmania? Um, I think that my favourite memory would be probably the 2008 Grand Final. Um, I got I got stitched up actually. My mum and dad won tickets to go over and watch it. I didn't get an invite even though I was only Hawks fan. Uh, so I was a bit stiff there. Um, oh, but nah, I think it was sort of the first, uh, well, it was obviously the first flag that I seen. Um, and I got the DVD and everything. So give that a watch every now and then. Uh, that'd be the memory. Um, and then I reckon the when Buddy kicked 13 against North Melbourne up at Utah's that day. Um, yep. Yeah, just the roar when he when he kicked it. It was pretty – only probably 10, 15,000 fans there, but it was it was electric when he kicked his 13th that day. Um, so that's, yeah. that's one that sort of sticks out. We're at the ground, but we've all heard the, uh, the heart out. 13, 13. <laughs> we love that. That's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, yourself, what's your favourite uh, – or, or your best football memory, personally? Yeah, um, I think I've sort of I've won two or three grand finals um, 
with parents in underage um, and with my school as well. Um, but so they're good memories. But I reckon my best one was my Devils debut um, when I was 16 against Calder Cannons. Um, we, it was the first game that the Devils ever played in Tassie um, in the NAB League. And my debut, and we ended up getting the win by about 15, 20 points in the end as well. Um, so yeah, that was um, that, that was a great day and probably best memory. Uh, brilliant, brilliant um, success. It's always good to stick with you. Um, so early on in your career, you mentioned, or oh, in your career, in your, uh, I guess, decision to, to pursue an AFL career, um, you, you've chosen uh, Tim Hazel, so uh, former Hawk as well. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, Tim. Yep, so um, Timmy first contacted me um, back after my 16s carnival um and and um just from the word go i just had a really good connection with timmy um a tassie boy um and mav weller as well um he was he was working with alongside timmy um and once again i just had a really good connection with mav um i caught up with them more than anyone else who contacted me um and they just showed yeah real interest in me from yeah, from day dot, um, and yeah, ever since Timmy's been really good for me, um, especially this year with with all my injury, um, he's just been keeping in contact with me all the time um, and keep me informed with everything. So yeah, no, he's been really good, Timmy. Good stuff. Uh, seems uh, quite impressive, Tim of uh, Vivid Sport. Um, had his own business. He's got some fitness things going on. He does the management. Uh, he used to do the Kokoda tracks or involved there in a the business so there you go hawks fans if if uh if tim's still doing that let's let's look after our own there um so if uh oh have you had any contact with uh any current or, or former afl players outside of tim and and mav uh yeah so i'm pretty good mates with matt mcginnis and patty walker who are with the um ruse at the moment um i was saying i was with mac last uh two weekends ago before um he went back over to melbourne um, so I got to catch up with him then. Um, and, yeah, Paddy as well. Um, yeah, I was, I've been through the ranks with Paddy uh, most of the way. So, um, And when I got to spend a week with North Melbourne earlier on um, this year before I broke my wrist, I, I stayed with him um, at his host family. So I was great to catch up with Paddy then um, there too. Um, and, yeah, they're probably the main two, yeah. I was yep. at Chug as well from Collingwood. Good stuff. And so you've got some other mates who have also nominated for the draft from Tassie and also some you've met through the AFL Academy. Who uh, who are some of your better mates? Um, from the Devils program, uh, so Baker Smith, uh, Darcy Gardner, Don Watt, Noah Holmes, um, all those sort of boys. Um, they've all nominated um, from down here. Um, and then from the NAB um, Carnival uh, camp, they've all, they obviously would have all nominated. But the, the couple that I had sort of better connections with were Cooper, ha Cooper Hamilton. Um, he was my roommate that trip and helped me a fair bit. I had, I had my arm in plaster for about five days and he was helping me, whether it be time or shoelace, a couple of food or whatever it was. Um, Coop was really good. Um, then the other one, Ben Hobbs, um, he was in the injury group with me as well um, that trip. Uh, so, yeah, got on really well with Hobbsy and uh, still keeping in contact with both the boys all the time. So, yeah. yeah. Good to hear. Um, well, good luck to all of those young men for the upcoming draft as well. Uh, here's a question. If you do happen to get picked up uh, from the WA or Queensland team, how do you think you'll handle the heat as a Tassie boy? Yeah, no, nah, it'll be, I think it'll be a rude shock for sure. <laughs> Jeez, pretty, it's still pretty chilly down here and it's nearly, well, we'll start to come to the summer months. So, um, yeah, no, nah, I think it'll be something that you'll probably adapt to um, reasonably quickly once you got used to it. But yeah, for the first, little while i reckon it'd, it'd hit me pretty hard <laughs> yep cool um tell us something about the combine that most fans wouldn't know about um i didn't actually get to do the combine because of my injury um recently had a surgery so i couldn't do it but i still got to go and watch um i guess the uh one thing that most wouldn't know um I think we, we only had five doing it. Um, we went inside and we did all the, the indoor testing first. Um, nice weather outside at that stage. Um, did all the indoor testing, went outside and it was absolutely bucketing down for the 2K. So the boys had to run um, in a, on a pretty wet track. 
Um, so that's probably one that most would know about. But um, no, they were, they still did a great job. Like that sort of coming up the straight, they had a bit of a bit of a wind and rain straight into their face sort of thing. But um, no, they went really well. Yep. And then as you've spoken to a few of the clubs, um, or maybe it was at the combine. You don't have to name the club, but uh, what was the weirdest question that you were asked from uh, the interviews? Um, weirdest question. I've actually been pretty lucky. I haven't had too many ones that are sort of uh, bamboozled me. Um, but the trickiest part of the interview, um, one club, they it was sort of a lot about uh, away from footy and not much about footy at all. And... They just kept adding parts to questions. Um, so you'd answer one part and then you have to you'd think back what was the next part and so on. Um, so that was probably the trickiest one for me. Um, I think they sort of try and get you to stuff up and um, contradict yourself sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, that's probably the trickiest one for me. Yeah. Beautiful. Right. Um, well, as we uh, finish it up, uh, thanks for joining us, uh, fans. But... Um, if you couldn't be involved in footy, what would you do, Sam? Um, I've enrolled in a uni course um, business tied in with sports management. Um, so that's something that I've been looking at during the year, um, going through year 12 with a careers counsellor at school. Um, so that's something that I'll probably look at. Um, yeah, footy didn't go my way this year. I, I probably still would move away and have a crack somewhere else. Um, just because this year like, I haven't had much exposure to playing footy um and feel like i could go away and maybe prove myself somewhere else um so i'll definitely look at that as well yeah excellent body's feeling all right now is it uh it's okay um got a i sort of had surgery on my wrist about six and a half weeks ago um okay. so i'm sort of starting to get all the movement back in the wrist um and whatnot i still i can still run and everything so that's going well um but yeah just trying to get the wrist back on track as best i can Beautiful, mate. And uh, where will we find you on uh, draft day? What will you be doing to uh, occupy yourself? Um, I'll, during the day, before the actual night, I reckon I'll just be trying to do stuff that I'm trying not to think about it. It'll be impossible, I know. But um, yeah, just trying and to... And then they're over two days on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the night, the night of, um, I'll just be um, just at home here with the family, um, probably Nana Pop and my cousins. Um, a couple of mates, maybe my girlfriend will be here. So, um, yeah, that'll be that'll be the way the night rolls, I reckon. Or the nights are beautiful, mate. Sam Banks, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thanks for joining us. We wish you all the best uh, for the upcoming draft. It's uh, nice for the fans to be able to ask a few questions, and you've been very generous just to jump on with us. So, thank you very much. No, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, pleasure. And uh, just for those on YouTube, if you want to, uh, we're gifting one lucky person at Denver Granger Barras signed Guernsey. So you can go to the uh, Talking Hawks YouTube community page for the details there. So, uh, Sam, we'll, we'll finish it up on that note. And I will uh, mate, just jump on here. Um, if you've got any questions for Sam, uh, we'll see what we can do to answer them. He might not be able to, but uh, chuck them in the comments. And, uh, mate, once again, we wish you all the best. Um, I hope you have a stellar career. No worries. Thanks very much, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate.